morning and welcome to St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church. I'm Pastor Monique Summers and we are grateful that you have decided to join us today for our morning worship service. Our service today will consist of prayer and scripture followed by the proclamation of the word of God. It is our desire that those who are listening on today who are already saved will be edified and those who do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that this will be the day that they will receive him as, as their Savior and as their Lord. Also, if you're listening and you're in a backslidden state, it is our hope, it is our desire that this will be the decision-making day that you will make Jesus your choice once again. Now, you will have the opportunity today, if it's your desire to sow an offering in this ministry, you can do so by sending a cash app to St. Luke Opelika, that's uh, dollar sign, S-T-L-U-K-E-O-P-E-L-I-K-A, or you may do so by Givelify to St. Luke Opelika, or by mail to P.O. Box 4138, Opelika, Alabama, 36803. At this time, we will pause to have our doxology, and following the doxology, we will move forward with the worship service, with our prayer, scripture, and the proclamation of the word of God.
At this time, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for our prayer this morning. And then following the prayer will be our scripture reading coming from 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. For those of you who would like to go ahead and mark your place for the scripture. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we, we come before you right now as humble as we know how. Oh God, just to laud and magnify your holy and your righteous name. God, we come before you with thanksgiving on our hearts this morning, thanking you for allowing us another opportunity to assemble ourselves together. Oh God, we know that it's not for what we have done that it's been so good, but because you are a good God. And so we pause this morning, dear Heavenly Father, just to tell you thank you. Thank you for waking us up and clothing us in our right minds and thanking you for providing a, a roof over our head, thanking you for the shelter that you have given us. Thank you for all that you are doing and have done, and we believe that you will continue to do. God, we come before you, not as perfect people, but people who are striving for perfection. We come now seeking your forgiveness of our shortcomings, realizing in some shape, form, or fashion, we have missed the mark by thought, word, or deed. And so we come now to Heavenly Father, heartily repenting of our sins and asking you to look beyond our faults and see that we are still your children who stand in need. Then God, we ask that you would touch our hearts and touch our minds and cause us to have that same forgiving spirit where we are able and willing to forgive one another of their trespasses against us. Now, oh God, we come this morning, not with a selfish prayer, but we come praying for others, dear Heavenly Father, that are less fortunate than us, even right now. We lift up those who are bereaved right now, dear Heavenly Father, who have lost loved ones. We ask that you would be with them and wipe the tears from their eyes and let them know, oh God, that you are there with them, even when loved ones are no longer with us. Then, God, we pray for those without food, without clothing, and, and without shelter. Sometimes, oh God, we take it for granted, the necessities of life that you have given us. And so, God, we lift up others who do not have even what we have. We ask, oh God, that you would still provide for them. And we realize on today that we are our brothers and sisters keepers. And so where there is lack, oh God, if we have it, touch our hearts and touch our minds that we will be a giving people willing to provide that which we see others stand in need of. Then dear Heavenly Father, we pray now and ask that you will bless this worship experience on today. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. God, you're our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. And so, God, we pray this prayer, believing that your word will go out and accomplish that which you sent it to do, that it will not return to you void, but it will serve a purpose, the purpose of which you have sent. And so we'll be careful in everything that we do in all ways to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we do pray and ask these blessings. And every believer say amen, amen, and amen. At this time, we will come to you with our scripture reading coming from 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, I'll be reading the new King James version of the text. And I'll start my reading at verse number 18. Second uh, Kings, the fourth chapter. And it reads thusly, and the child grew. And that happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to a servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees to noon and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, why are you going to him today? It, it is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, 
it is well. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so he departed and went to the man uh, and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. And so it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant Gehazi, look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. Now, when she came to the man of God at the hill, she called him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? And then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. And if you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him, but lay my staff on the face of the child. Thus end the reading of the scripture. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. This morning, I want to use for a topic, uh, and it's really asking a question. Is it well? Is it well with you? I don't know what situation you may be facing on today, but I want to submit the question as Elijah had told his servant to ask the Shunammite woman when he saw her coming toward him who had saddled up a donkey and told her servant, take me to the man of God. And he simply sent the question to her, is it well? Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? And is it well with your child? I want to discuss this this morning, to preach this, to talk about it this morning. I was privileged on yesterday to attend a night worship service where one of my colleagues in the ministry preached a message on it is well. And it came from this same particular text. But this morning, God told me to ask the question to the listening audience, to the congregation today. Is it well with you? I want you to take an assessment of your life and, and to really ask yourself, is it well with me? We find in the text a Shunammite woman. We don't know her name. The Bible just lets us know she is a woman who is from the city of Shunem. I begin to research the word Shunem. It is a border town in Ishakar. But the unique thing that I discovered about Shunem is that it means uneven. And just for a few minutes this morning, as I pose the question, is it well? I want to talk to some folks who are in some uneven places in your life. When you think of the word uneven, you think of the fact that I thought of building a house. Whenever a house is built, uh, if it's not built on level ground, uh, if the foundation hasn't been laid correctly, it is very costly to, to correct, to make uh, the uneven place even again. It could be bumpy or slightly irregular. It could be a, a, a rough place that, that, that the house sort of got off kilter. In other words, it's not level anymore. It's not smooth anymore. And I just thought this morning, as we pose the question, is it well, that I would ask somebody, are we like the Shunammite woman from Shuna? Are we in a place that is uneven? A place that is unleveled, a place that is a little bit jagged or maybe a little bumpy. In other words, it's a rough place to be in. Well, the good news is this morning that God is no respecter of person. What he does for one, he will do for another. So I want to encourage someone this morning that even though we may be in Shunem, even though we may be in an un 
uneven place, an unleveled place, uh, God can still bless us in spite of where we're at. And so I ask the question to you again, is it well? For that is the question that was posed to the Shunammite woman in a verse number 26. It says, is it well with you, first of all? Is it well, uh, second of all, with your husband? And is it well with uh, the child? Uh, and so I stopped by this morning to, to encourage someone to let you know that she answered, uh, it is well. So I begin to research just a, a little bit further because somebody needs to hear this this morning who's in an unlevel place, uh, who's in a place uh, called Shunam, like the Shunamite woman. And you say saying in your spirit, it is well, but you don't see your way clear. When I researched the word, it is well in this particular text, the word it is well means peace. Uh, the peace of God that we've so often heard about, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. How could this woman say it is well? Because if I backed up just a few verses, I will find her uh, opening up her home to the man of God, the prophet of God. And not only opening her home, she talked to her husband about building on a room to her home so that whenever the man of God would pass through, he would have a place to lay his head. And because she had shown hospitality to the man of God, he wanted to do something to bless her. And if we read the text carefully before we get to verse number 26, we find that the man of God tells the woman that this time and next year you will conceive a son. She had everything that she needed. In other words, she was in a place of contentment. And uh, God had blessed her now. She had a husband of old age and God had blessed her womb and given her a son. And now in the text, when we began our reading, we find that this son had went out, uh, perhaps uh, just to look at his father work with the harvesters. And the Bible says that uh, he fell, he fell out in other words. And they took him home to his mother and she laid the child on her lap to around 12 noon. And around 12 noon, she realized that the child was deceased. Uh, I like this woman because she was a woman on a mission. She wasn't a woman who was merely mourning. And uh, when she takes off and saddles up to go meet the prophet, he asked the question, is it well? And she says, it is well. In other words, she let him know, sent the message back that I got peace in this thing. I want to talk to somebody this morning who may not have experienced the peace of God, but I stopped by to tell you that God is a God who can bring peace uh, to any situation. In other words, when I begin uh, to look at the commentary, it said that this word as noted here in the text, not only it is well means peace, but we can think only that she gives this answer to Gehazi so that she can avoid many words. Perhaps she was full in her spirit. According to the Cambridge commentary, the Cambridge Bible for schools and college commentary said she didn't say it to deceive Gehazi, but maybe she said it because if she opened her mouth, she will begin to weep. Uh, and so I say to us today, uh, is it well with your situation? Because I stopped by to tell you that God has a way of turning dead situations around and he can bring them back to life again. And so we find her in the text simply saying, it is well, simply saying, I have peace. Uh, and so I thought uh, I would ask this question as we begin to look at the three points that I want us to consider. Uh, what do you do with the uneven places in your life? Uh, 
we find uh, that this woman, this Shunammite woman, who was already content when the prophet came into her life, who was already happy in life, uh, wasn't looking for anything. And the prophet blesses her by telling her that God would open her womb and she would conceive a child. Can I tell somebody that I believe that this woman, she was a woman of morals, uh, a woman uh, who had principles. Uh, she had a righteous conduct. This woman's uh, miraculous story, uh, I want to suggest to us, would never have happened if she had not shown kindness, uh, if she had not being hospitable to the man of God, uh, the man of God traveling through her neck of the woods. Uh, and she says to her husband that this man uh, is a holy man of God. Uh, and she uh, persuades her husband uh, to let's build on uh, a room so that he and his servant, uh, whenever they're here in town, uh, will have a place uh, to lay their heads. Uh, well, uh, I want to say to somebody this morning uh, that sometimes uh, we won't get our break through uh, until we learn to be men and women, uh, boys and girls uh, who walk uh, with high morals, uh, who offer hospitality. Uh, I believe it's in Galatians uh, around about the sixth chapter uh, that we find these words. Uh, be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Look at the woman of God who had added on to her house. And now she finds herself in a situation. Good God Almighty, the Bible says, for whatever a man sows, she added on uh, to bless the man of God because uh, sooner or later uh, tragedy will knock at your door uh, and if you sow uh, you can reap uh, a good reward uh, for the Bible says uh, whatever a man sows uh, that shall he also reap uh, for he who sows to his flesh uh, will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. So let us not get weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we lose not hard, if we faint not. There's a season that's coming to our life, and the Bible says that we will reap it if we don't faint, uh, therefore, uh, good God Almighty, uh, in my hard times, uh, therefore, uh, in my blessed times, uh, therefore, uh, as we have opportunity, uh, let us do good to all men, uh, especially those uh, who are part of the household of faith. Uh, this woman, uh, this woman of moral character, uh, this woman showed hospitality. Uh, she sold uh, into the man of God's life. Uh, and when her time of need came, uh, if we keep reading, uh, we find in the text uh, that the same man she blessed, uh, she reaped uh, a harvest uh, before her child uh, was just asleep, uh, according to the prophet. Uh, but when he stopped by her house uh, and went to the room uh, that she built on for him, uh, the Bible says he went in, uh, good God Almighty, uh, and she laid upon that child uh, and he could feel the warmth of the child's body uh, coming back to life. Uh, God is saying to us this morning, uh, keep on being uh, men and women of morals uh, because what you sow uh, is about to come in uh, in a harvest. Uh, that thing uh, which you thought would never live again, uh, that situation, uh, that job, uh, that relationship, uh, God says uh, he's going to bring uh, it back to pass uh, because uh, you have been uh, men and women who have been showing hospitality. And the Bible says you show kindness 
especially to those uh, who are part of the household of faith. Good God Almighty. That's why uh, I believe she could say it is well uh, with my soul uh, because she had sown uh, and she was expecting a harvest. Uh, who am I talking to today? Uh, you've sown uh, in tears. Uh, but God says uh, he's about to give you your joy back. Uh, you've sown uh, in the midnight hours. Uh, but God says uh, joy comes uh, in the morning time. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, I feel all right. Uh, but what else uh, can I glean uh, from this woman uh, who had morals? I want to submit to us uh, that this Shunammite mother uh, was a mother uh, who was on a mission. Uh, how do I know uh, when I read uh, 2 Kings uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 22 uh, through 25, uh, we find uh, these words. Uh, she was uh, indeed on, uh, on a mission. Uh, Verse 22 says, uh, then she called to her husband uh, and said, uh, please uh, send me one of the young men uh, and one of the donkeys uh, that I may run to the man of God uh, and come back. Uh, and so he said to his wife, uh, why are you going to him today? Uh, it is neither the new moon uh, nor the Sabbath, uh, but when you're on a mission, uh, when you're trying to accomplish something, uh, it'll make you move uh, on the days you normally would not move. Uh, and so she said to her husband, uh, it is well. Uh, then she saddled a donkey uh, and she said to a servant, uh, drive uh, and go forward. Uh, don't you slack in pace uh, for me unless I tell you. Uh, and so she departed uh, and went to the man of God uh, at Mount Carmel. Uh, and so it was uh, when the man of God saw her far off, uh, he said to his servant, uh, Luke, uh, the sooner my woman, uh, run to her, uh, meet her. Uh, and ask her, uh, is it well with you? Uh, is it well with your husband? Uh, is it well with your child? Uh, is it well this morning uh, with your household? Uh, well, uh, she was not only uh, a woman, uh, a moral uh, character. She was not only a woman uh, who showed hospitality uh, to the man of God, uh, but she was, uh, in this particular text, uh, a woman uh, who was on a mission. Uh, we see her faith uh, is on display. Uh, perhaps uh, somebody's listening right now uh, and you're looking uh, at your situation, uh, your it. Uh, for her, it was her child. Uh, but for somebody else, it may be your finances. Uh, for somebody else, it may be that you want to see your whole family saved. Uh, for somebody else, it may be your family, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, and perhaps uh, it could even be you. Uh, but tragedy, uh, had struck her household, uh, and no doubt uh, she was filled with tears. Uh, no doubt uh, she was about to give up hope. Uh, but she said something. Uh, she didn't allow fear uh, to override her faith. Uh, but God has not given us uh, the spirit of fear, uh, but a love, uh, power, uh, and a sound mind. Uh, and so she says to a servant, uh, saddle up, uh, saddle up your donkey uh, and take me uh, running full speed uh, to the man of God. Uh, don't slow down. Uh, unless I give you orders to slow down. Uh, in other words, uh, this woman uh, who uh, had morals, uh, this woman uh, was now on a mission. Uh, she calls her faith, uh, even though she couldn't see it. Uh, I believe she believed uh, that if she could just get to the man of God, uh, she could hang on to hope uh, and see what the Lord 
would do. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, who am I talking to today? Uh, you and I uh, are just like the Shunammite woman uh, and that unleveled place, uh, that irregular place, uh, that uneven place uh, in your life. Uh, I dare you today uh, to go uh, see the man of God. Uh, I don't believe uh, she was just running to Elijah, uh, but she was running uh, to the God uh, of Elijah. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, what's driving you today? Uh, are you running to God uh, or are you just running to people? Uh, she uh, being uh, this woman uh, who already had uh, everything uh, no doubt that she wanted uh, when she met the prophet. Uh, he said, what can I do? Uh, can I speak to someone for you? Uh, she said, I live among my own people. Uh, he said, what can I do? Uh, it was a servant uh, who told the prophet uh, that this woman has no son. Uh, her husband is of old age. Uh, and so uh, the blessing that came in her household uh, was now uh, seemingly departing. Uh, but look at God uh, bring restoration. Because uh, not only uh, as I get ready to close, uh, was she a woman of moral character? Uh, not only uh, was she a woman who was on a mission, uh, but she uh, was a woman uh, who received a miracle. Uh, anybody here uh, expecting God uh, to perform a miracle? in your life. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, he's no respecter of person. Uh, what he did uh, way back then uh, is the same God. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, what he did for the Shunammite woman. Uh, I believe he'll do for you, 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 and me uh, if we uh, just believe uh, in the miracle. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, John uh, Four and forty-eight, uh, so Jesus uh, said to him, uh, unless you see signs and wonders, uh, you will not believe. Uh, he was talking to a man uh, who wanted to see his son uh, healed again. Uh, but I stopped by uh, to tell the church uh, that God uh, is still in the miracle working business uh, and uh, he will do it uh, and he does it all by himself. Uh, anybody here uh, need a miracle? Uh, don't just wait uh, to see a sign of wonder, uh, but if you'll believe, uh, you can have it. Uh, God said uh, in Matthew 17, uh, he said to them, uh, because of your little faith, uh, this woman uh, didn't have little faith, uh, but she did have uh, some faith. Uh, but truly, uh, I say to you, uh, if we have faith uh, like the grain, uh, the size of a mustard seed, uh, we can look at our it uh, and say it is well, uh, if we have faith, uh, just a little bit of faith, uh, we can say to the mountain, uh, we can say to the situation, uh, we can say to the circumstance, uh, move, uh, move here, uh, or move there. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that that situation, uh, it will move uh, and nothing. Uh, I said nothing uh, would be impossible for you and me uh, if you and I uh, would grab some faith uh, like the Shunammite woman. Uh, she went to the man of God. Uh, she didn't look at her situation. Uh, in fact, she left the situation. Uh, sometimes uh, to get our miracle, uh, to get our breakthrough, uh, we're going to have to move uh, away from it uh, and just believe uh, the impossible will happen. Uh, I believe, uh, as Mark 16, 17 says, uh, and these signs uh, will accompany those, uh, those who believe uh, in my name. Uh, they can cast out demons. Uh, they can speak in new tongues. Uh, and anything that attack us uh, will not prosper. Uh, no weapon uh, formed against us uh, shall be able uh, 
able to stand. I stop by to remind the church uh, that God is uh, still in the miracle working business. Uh, if you and I uh, become men and women uh, a moral character, uh, if you and I uh, saddle up uh, and go out on our mission, uh, knowing if God is for us, uh, who can be against us? Uh, you do know uh, the highs of uh, the servant of the man of God uh, tried to stop the woman. Uh, I stopped by to tell you uh, that there'll be some people uh, who want to push you aside, uh, but don't you stop pursuing uh, the God uh, of Elijah uh, because in him uh, is miracles. Uh, he's still uh, a miracle working God. Uh, anybody here uh, is willing to say uh, like the Shunammite woman, uh, it is well uh, despite what it looks like uh, don't know what tomorrow will bring uh, i dare you to say that it is well uh, it uh, is well uh, which means uh, the peace of god and the bible says that the peace of god surpasses all uh, understanding no wonder Hallelujah. The songwriter Horatio Spafford, who was a successful lawyer and real estate investor who lived in Chicago with his wife, with his son and his four daughters. And uh, when tragedy struck his home, the Bible says uh, that uh, he lost uh, his four-year-old son to scarlet fever. He also suffered loss from his investments. And so he thought he would send his family on a vacation to England. But uh, he had some work that he had to do before he could join them. And uh, the story goes on uh, that as uh, Spafford's wife and children left, the four daughters, that the ship that they were on uh, began to sink. Uh, and on that voyage, uh, only his daughter, uh, only his wife survived. And the Bible says that she sent him a message, a telegram saying, I'm saved, uh, but I'm saved alone. And uh, the story goes on to say that he left to, on his voyage to go meet his wife. And while he was sailing over to England to meet his wife, that the captain of the ship uh, said uh, to Spafford, uh, we are now at the spot. Hey, we're now at the place uh, where your four daughters drowned. Uh, but instead of mourning, uh, instead of weeping, uh, the Bible says, uh, the, 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 the story says uh, that he was inspired uh, to write the lyrics uh, to the hymn, uh, one of the greatest hymns of the church today, uh, entitled, It Is Well uh, With uh, My Soul. Uh, he didn't focus on what was lost. Uh, he didn't focus on how in the world would he be able to move forward, uh, but he began uh, to in the lyrics uh, to it is well uh, with my soul. Uh, so I stopped by uh, as I closed the message uh, to ask the question, uh, is it well with you today? Uh, is it well uh, with your soul, uh, with your mind, uh, with your will, uh, and with your emotions? Uh, is it well? Do you have the peace of God in uh, the situation that you find yourself in uh, right now? And if you're listening and you're saying, preacher lady, I don't have uh, that peace. Well, the good news is uh, I'll invite you uh, to allow the Prince of Peace to come into your life right now. His name uh, is Jesus. 
He came uh, through 40 and two generations. He lived, uh, he died. Uh, three days later, uh, he rose again uh, with all power uh, in his hands. Uh, if you're listening right now, uh, I offer you uh, the Prince of Peace, uh, just like the Shunammite woman, uh, just like Horatio Spafford. Uh, I want us all to be able to say, uh, despite what we're facing, uh, that it uh, is well. And if you're willing to receive Jesus Christ today, I promise you, he'll get you to that place where you will be able to say, like the woman, the Shunammite woman in an unlevel place, an uneven place in our life. Hallelujah. That it is well with my soul. If there's one that has given their life to Christ right now, we ask that you let us know by typing a comment there on social media. If you're on the phone line, let someone know that you accept this message and more so you receive Jesus Christ as your savior and Lord, as the Prince of Peace. And you will be able to face anything in life like the Shunammite woman, a woman of morals, a woman on a mission and a woman who received a miracle. And I believe God would do the same for you and I on today. Would you receive him? Let us pray to Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We thank you, oh God, for being the Prince of Peace. We thank you, oh God, that we, like the Shumamite woman, can answer that it is well. It is well because we are men and women who are striving to walk with moral conduct. We're men and women who are on a mission, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all your righteousness, realizing that all these things that we stand in need of will be added unto us. We are men and women, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, that are on the reception line, waiting for the miracle. We're next in line for the miracle, and so, God, we thank you. We thank you for your saving grace of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, oh God, for everyone that's listening on today, that they received a word of edification, that they received a word of salvation, that we're all better off because we stopped by St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church and heard a word from the Lord. And so we give you honor. We give you praise. And we give you the glory in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And somebody ought to shout, it is well. It is well. It is well. Because this is not how the story ends. The same child was awakened. How many know today? that God is gonna awaken some things back up in our life. And on that final judgment day, the dead in Christ shall rise again. That, my brothers and sisters, is good news. So we thank you for joining us today for our worship service. At this time, we'll prepare for the benediction and a closing song. And we pray that something has been said or done in this worship service that will encourage you in your walk with the Lord, the benediction. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. May it keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit may it be among you and remain with you and I always. In Jesus name, we pray 
and the saints of God all say, Amen, Amen, Amen. It is well. Hallelujah. I decree and declare it for you. It is well. It is well with our soul. Thank you, Jesus. This concludes the message on today. Next week, we plan, if it's the Lord's will, to worship live at St. Luke, but we hope to come back to you on social media for those who cannot attend, that you will be able to join us via social media on next week. And we give God praise for your presence on today. We'll now have our closing song. God bless you and God keep you is our praise. Mm -hmm.